Brand Studios brought to you by Old Mutual. Well, Orlando West High School was my, um, as is my alma mater because um, I started my musical career at Orlando West High School under a very, very strict disciplinarian, Dr. S.K. Matsike. And uh, because I was born in Orlando West, and when I came back from overseas, I since bought a home in Pimville, and I've been here since. I mean, it's 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 my... It's my roots. This is where I get my inspiration for creating the kind of music that I always wish to create. Rise was quite special in that, uh, you know, it came at a time when um, Soweto was on fire in the in the early 80s and uh, there was all this um, finger pointing. And for us as artists, it was important that we we created um, an interest. We refocus our energies in actually, um, I wouldn't use the word inciting, but inviting people to rise against a system which we felt was uh, unfair. I always refer to burnout as an um, an ancestral gift from my ancestors and because it's not the kind of song that I would have spent hours writing. It's a song that came to me in 10 minutes. I mean, I was writing and I was recording some material with uh, a Rich, a Richard Mitchell. And as he was working out, mixing the stuff, I decided to go onto a piano. And I started playing the piano. As I was playing the piano, this, this riff came to me. And I immediately requested Richard, I said, Rich, let's stop everything we're doing. I want to play this thing quickly before I forget it. And everything, voila, burnout came to mind and I went in and I sang the lyrics on the spot. And the following day I invited, um, oh, Steve Kekana walked into the, into the studios with Kos Khadebe. And one of the things that Steve asked me was, what is this, what is, what is this song? I said to him, go in there and do anything that you feel you can add to the song. And Steve came in with it, you know, the riff that he does at the end of the song. And 10 minutes, the song was done. And the following day, I went to my record company. Peter Gallo was still, uh, may his soul rest in peace. Peter Gallo was there and I played it to him. Now being the kind of uh, music person he was, he knew immediately. Him and I ever said, we have a big record here. And Burnout was the song. The song of the 80s. The song of the 80s. <laughs> you ask children in Soweto today, they'll still sing the song for you. I, I, it's amazing. I mean, at times, at Christmas Eve, I'll be, I'll be receiving calls from all over the world, all over the world, from South Africans who are uh, the, in Italy, Spain, England, America, Russia, everywhere, in a party, they'll be playing this song. And whoever is in that audience and knows me will call. So I always receive those calls to say, we're burning out wherever we are. Wow. <laughs> In terms of burnout, basically, I, I, you know, I've since discovered the talent that is available in this country and how it has actually ex expanded and, um, you know, uh, um, managed to, to find itself in the, in the international, on the international stage. I mean, one of the musicians that I really would have wanted to work with, probably not even the first one, I think someone like Black Coffee would probably do wonders to the song, but I believe also some of the young hip hop artists like uh, AKA are uh, some of the people that I probably believe would really work with the song and probably give it a fresh idea.
Yeah, Jam, so it is also another, you know, it's another a very interesting um, song because uh, given the kind of music I was recording at that time, it, it, it never occurred to me that I could actually um, infuse township music into the songs that I was doing. And I, uh, Harari was traveling and was touring the UK at that time. And we went into a concert where Joe Jackson was performing. But what was very interesting, there was this British group playing township music. I mean, it was, what a pleasant surprise it was. I mean, this, they were playing real, real township music. And I thought to myself, wow, this is quite interesting. A band in England playing music that we wouldn't have felt that we played. I came back home and one, when I got into the studio, Jive Soweto came, came to mind and I invited Weston Corsi, who was the master of the saxophone, township saxophone at that time, and we recorded Jive Soweto. And what was very interesting as well about it, that song was that uh, I went back to England because then Virgin Record had signed me as, as, as an African artist. And I was walking towards a... Uh, um, African, Africa Center. There was a, a Kenyan band play on the night. I was with Julian Bahula. But wow, as we were walking closer to the venue, I could hear the song. But for me, it didn't occur that it could be my song. And Julian Bahula looks at me and says, does that fam sound familiar? I said, yeah, it sounds like Jeff Soweto. And he laughs. But as we were walking closer, we could hear the volume. But as I walked into the hall, I was wearing my, you know, my beret, which obviously was my um, uh, fashion statement at the time. And the DJ just raised the volume. And he said, the man has just walked in as you, but I could see, you know, bodies just dancing to the song. And Jai Soweto was on Capital Radio, and that was a Capital Radio concert. Wow, Jai Soweto was a hit in England. Lisiba is an instrument which was, um, which is significant with the shepherd lifestyle in, in, in the kingdom of, uh, uh, the mountain kingdom of Lesotho. In the 80s, when Hugh and Miriam and some American musicians came through, I would go through the villages and hear the sound. And even on radio, when you come close to a, um, a, um, a program, it's, it is a signal tune that they would use. And obviously, I was influenced with, I was influenced by the sound I heard on, and I felt one day I'd love to use that instrument on a, you know, and I recorded Tababusiu and I brought in a man from Lesotho to record that instrument, Lisiba Labasotho. A very, very significant instrument. And ever since that, I've had a great relationship with the people of Lesotho because of that. And some of them would always be saying, you're the first musician on this continent to recognize that instrument as an important part of a." Uh, advancement of uh, Basotho culture. Music has changed. How it makes us feel never will. The time is now to visit mstudios.co.za.